Welcome to r slash am I the butthole where we get to judge people on the internet. Am I the butthole for kicking my mother out of my recently inherited house after she called me disgusting? For a little background, I inherited a small house from my late aunt last month after she passed away. I started living there three months ago after I recently turned 18 and started college. My mother thought it was a good idea to live with me and take care of me since I just broke up with my girlfriend and I'm still studying. Since she cooks for me, it worked out fine. However, I have a habit of sleeping naked at night. She noticed this after she entered my room once and called me disgusting. If I were a boy, I could understand that I would make her uncomfortable, but I'm a woman. I just shrugged off the comment, but she made it a habit of calling my body gross and that no man will ever want an exhibitionist. Which is funny since I'm a lesbian. She enters my room just to tell me I'm disgusting. She even makes gagging sounds. For the record, I only go naked right after showering at night, then I head straight in my room to sleep. After about a week of unbearable comments, I told her to pack up and leave. Now my elder brother won't stop bothering me and telling me that I'm a huge butthole and stuff like that. OP, you get 0 out of 5 buttholes, and your mom gets 2 out of 5 buttholes. In addition to being completely wrong, since when do guys not like naked ladies? And besides, sleeping naked is the only way to go. Sun's down, undies down. Am I the butthole for refusing to babysit my nephew even in a family emergency because my brother and sister-in-law lied before? I'm my brother and sister-in-law's only relative in the city. When my sister-in-law was pregnant, I made it clear that I'd only babysit for them in the case of a serious emergency. For example, someone has a medical emergency. I won't babysit if they just wanted time off from being parents because I don't have free time for that. I work 60 to 100 hours a week, so if anyone needs time off, it's me. Last year, my brother and sister-in-law asked me to babysit on the day of an informal work meeting, a lake retreat organized by my company. Everyone's expected to go, and it's frowned upon if you miss it. They wanted to go on a date. I said no, I have an important work event. They continued to nag me about how they haven't gone on a date for so long. The night before that day, they called in a panic and said their friend Mike from the next city over had been in a car accident, and I needed to babysit nephew for a few hours so they could go visit Mike. I reluctantly agreed, with the stipulation that they'd be back by 7am the next day to pick nephew up so I could leave for my work event. They didn't come back until two days later. I had to cancel on my superiors the morning of, which looked awful. My brother and sister-in-law never responded to multiple texts and calls from me. Their excuse was that Mike's life was in danger and they were too busy helping his girlfriend. I accepted that, since I had met both Mike and his girlfriend at a party in the past and thought they were good people. But I emphasized that this absolutely could not happen again. Throughout the next two months, my brother and sister-in-law regularly used the excuse of aiding Mike in his recovery and needing to visit him in order to make me babysit my nephew. Mike's girlfriend's company and my company had a meeting two months after Mike's accident. I ran into her and asked her how Mike was recovering. Apparently, she had no idea that he had ever been hospitalized. Neither did Mike. Mike had never been in an accident, and although brother and sister-in-law had gone to visit them recently, it was for drinks and bowling, not bringing them chicken noodle soup in the hospital. I confronted my brother and sister-in-law, and they denied it at first, but finally admitted that they'd been lying about Mike's accident so they could go on date nights. They claimed I gave us no choice since you would never help us out when we needed time together because parenting was so stressful and difficult. And you had no idea and it was just a little white lie. I made it clear that after this incident, I would never babysit for them and I've stuck to that. Yesterday, my brother and sister-in-law begged me to babysit for them because there was an actual medical emergency in my sister-in-law's family. They even sent me proof of the relative's hospitalization. I still said no. They didn't care about betraying my trust, so I don't care if they can't afford childcare or if the relative is in the hospital. They said I was a bad aunt, I needed to get over my grudge, and I'm a petty butthole. Am I the butthole? No, OP, this is complete and utter BS. If they really want a babysitter, they can just hire a babysitter. And don't try to feed me this utter BS that they don't have money for it. If they've got money for date nights, then they've got money for babysitters. They cried wolf, got caught, and now they can live with the consequences. I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes and them 3 out of 5 buttholes. Am I the butthole for not letting my child speak her native language at home? This isn't as bad as it sounds. I'm a 35 year old Englishman and my wife is a 32 year old Welsh woman. But if you get right down to it, we're both British anyway. 
She's always been kind of funny about identifying as Welsh and not British, no matter how many times I tell her they're not mutually exclusive, lol. I'm really tired of having to put up with her extreme nationalism. First of all, she insisted that our daughter have a Welsh name, so now my family can't even pronounce it or spell it. I have to put up with jokes about my daughter's name and her name getting spelled wrong all the time. The only primary school in the area is a Welsh school, so my daughter started learning all her schoolwork through Welsh. This is fine, I guess. It's pointless, but other than not being able to help her with her homework, which her mom does anyway, it's not an issue. The issue is that my daughter started speaking Welsh with her mother's family, her mother, and her friends outside of school. I asked her to stop, but my wife said I was being really rude to ask her to stop speaking in her native language. But she can speak English too. It's not her native language when her father doesn't speak it. My wife said that I'm a butthole because I agreed to raise our child bilingually, but I was under the impression that our daughter would still choose to speak English when she's around us. She speaks English and Welsh at home, sometimes mixing them both. It's confusing and can't be good for her education to be learning everything in a pointless language. What happens when she goes to university in English? My wife says that I should get lessons for Welsh, and she would be happy to pay and help. But I really don't see the point in learning a dead language when we can all just speak English. Am I the butthole for wanting my child to speak English? I love how OP calls his wife an extreme nationalist, and then proceeds to go on a long, borderline racist rant about how much he hates the Welsh language. OP, you agreed to raise your daughter as bilingual, and then you're upset that your daughter is bilingual? Also, how on earth are you calling it a dead language when she's literally going to a Welsh school where they're teaching in Welsh? You and your wife are giving your daughter a huge advantage by teaching her two languages, and I don't know why you're fighting this. So yeah, OP, I'm giving you two out of five buttholes. Also, I've got to include this comment from Kermit Lafrogue. She's Welsh, lives in Wales, speaks Welsh at school, and you're freaking out because she speaks Welsh? Am I the butthole for announcing my engagement at my twin sister's wedding? My twin sister and I, both 24, have always had some kind of weird rivalry. It never really came from my side, always hers. Our dad left our family when we were 10, and because my sister wasn't that close to me or my mom, it created the resentment she now has for me. We have ups and downs in terms of our relationship. About a week ago, my sister got married to her boyfriend of one year. I've never really liked their relationship, nor did I approve of them getting married so soon, but I went to the wedding. My fiancé and I got engaged about a week beforehand, and due to her wedding, she asked if I would keep it under the radar until after the wedding, which I hesitantly agreed to. To me, it was just a sign of insecurity. My fiancé and I have been together almost seven years. She shacked up with the first person who showed interest. The wedding comes and it's all fine, until the reception. It was fairly large, and a lot of people who I hadn't seen since we graduated high school were there, so I obviously took this as a chance to catch up. i just gotten engaged. I'm not going to take my ring off to appease my sister. So, naturally, I got questions which I honestly responded to. I don't go out of my way to tell anyone we're engaged, but if someone asked, I told them, which I don't see anything wrong with. It's unlikely I'll see many of the attendees again, so why should I have to wait? Towards the end of the night, my mom and sister pulled me aside absolutely furious with me, saying I'd made the night all about me, which I absolutely hadn't. It was a quick congratulations with each conversation, and that was it. I didn't get on top of the stage and announce it. They've both cut me off for apparently being incapable of letting other people have their time to shine, and pretty much everyone in our family and close circle of friends has told me I'm in the wrong. So am I the butthole? OP, I'm going to be straight with you. Your post is sending up some red flags. It's clear that you're trying to come off as neutral, but the resentment you hold for your sister is still shining through. Like you're judging your sister for getting married young when you're engaged. Isn't that a little hypocritical? Also, your sister asked you to do something during the wedding, you agreed, and then you straight up broke the promise. I mean, you did make the night about you. Making the night about you is a sliding scale. Sure, getting up on the stage and announcing it to everyone would have made it even more about you, but you don't have to do that to still make that night about you. You said, it's unlikely I'll see many of the attendees again, so why should I have to wait? But by that logic, if you're never going to see these people again, why is it so important that you tell them that you're engaged? 
So yeah, OP, what you did is pretty selfish, and I've got a sneaking suspicion that the real situation is even worse than you're letting on. So I'll say that your butthole score is greater than or equal to 2 out of 5 buttholes. Am I the butthole for moving out mid-lease and straining my roommate with full rent after his girlfriend keeps accusing me of being creepy? So I've been living with my current roommate for 2 years now. I'm actually subletting and I'm on my second year which is month to month, but we've had an unofficial verbal agreement that I'd stay until the end of the year. I mean, it's a pandemic. I didn't think I'd move either. Anyways, his girlfriend moved in at the beginning of the year. It's been… a lot. She's obviously had some trauma in the past. I didn't dig, but I believe she was the victim of a home robbery a few years ago. Well, when she first moved in, my roommate had some ground rules for me so his girlfriend would be more comfortable. She obviously wasn't thrilled about having another roommate. He said I couldn't talk to her, like strike up a conversation if he wasn't there, because she doesn't want to have to talk to me if she didn't have to. He also said that it would be best if we tried to not use the same facilities at the same time. Like, if she's cooking in the kitchen, I should wait until she leaves before I grab food, etc. Like, yeah, it's strange, but I figured it's his place, so whatever. I'm not trying to befriend her either. Things got worse in recent months because we've all been working from home. It's really hard to avoid someone 24-7. So obviously I've slipped up more. One time, I came home from Costco and offered her a spare bottle of coconut water I couldn't fit in the fridge. Big mistake. My roommate had to have a talk with me that night about how I should know she would never drink my drinks and it's weird for me to even offer. The most recent one was when she was watching Game of Thrones in our living room. I just absentmindedly watched a bit standing behind the couch. I laughed at a scene which startled her, and she looked up and saw me standing behind her. I got another earful from my roommate about how I needed to stop creeping on her now that I'm home all the time. Long story short, my friend just had a place open up that's cheap and I'm gonna move. I told my roommate and he's pissed because of our unofficial agreement and now he's probably gonna have to pay full rent for a while. I feel bad because, yeah, I did say I wasn't gonna move, but I'm also pretty sick of both him and his girlfriend. However, I feel kind of guilty because I agreed to their weird rules before all this started back when I thought it'd be okay. Uh, yeah OP, I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes here and your roommates are showing some really bizarre behavior. So first of all, you have rights as a tenant. I mean, it doesn't really matter that you're subletting, you're paying for your room. That means you have a right to be comfortable in your own home. Your roommate can't just let his girlfriend move in and then expect you to completely change your life to accommodate her. Also, since you said that your roommate is going to pay full rent for a while, that would indicate to me that his girlfriend is paying zero rent. So why are you expected to tiptoe around her when she's not paying any rent herself? In fact, I have a sneaking suspicion that your roommate violated the lease agreement by having his girlfriend move in. I'm giving them each one out of five buttholes. Am I the butthole for telling my daughter to cancel her marriage? I have a 27 year old daughter who was with her boyfriend for 7 years and they got engaged not long ago. Just a small party, not many guests. She's always talked to me about how she loved him, how he always listens to her, and he was made for her. I've agreed with her since I found him to be a good natured man, he was kind and humble and was always respectful to our family. We've met his parents for dinner two or three times and they hit me as a little sexist, asking questions to my wife like, I don't know why you're working. Isn't that the husband's job? It's the mother's job to be taking care of the children. Now that my daughter wanted to make it more serious, they planned the wedding. Anyways, we've been planning the wedding and one day her boyfriend comes to me and says that his parents want to talk to me. I was going to call my daughter too, but he said that she wasn't allowed. I went with him and his parents started talking with me about a dowry. I was confused and said there was no dowry and in 2020 who even gives a dowry? But my daughter's boyfriend and his parents started lecturing me about how necessary it was and how my daughter would be a stay at home wife. My daughter's told me that she wants to continue her dream so I don't know what that is. Anyways, they told me I should give it a thought and told me not to tell my daughter for the time being. However, I immediately told my daughter about it, and she started crying, saying she didn't know that her boyfriend was so sexist. She asked me what she should do now, and I told her that she wasn't being forced and could cancel her marriage if she didn't want it. Well, that's exactly what happened, and now her boyfriend and his parents are calling me, saying I took away the love of his life, etc. 
On top of that, some of her friends said that I was a butthole for breaking up what would have been a healthy marriage, but it's my daughter's happiness that matters. Am I the butthole? Man, this is a weird one, OP. So your daughter asked you for advice, and you gave her very reasonable advice, and then she made an adult decision based on that? I mean, the advice you gave was reasonable, but even if it wasn't, it was your daughter who made the decision. So shouldn't they be angry at her instead of you? Actually, now that I think about it, the fact that they're angry at you instead of the daughter makes me think that these guys are even more sexist than I realized. They're so sexist that they think you, the father, has the only opinion that matters, and that the decision of the daughter just doesn't matter in the situation. These people are sending up some major red flags, and it sounds like your daughter dodged a bullet. OP, I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes. That was our slash am I the butthole, and if you like this content, then check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.